As we remain standing, may I call on Professor Ike Harris of the to say the opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for gathering us here today to participate in the 65th inaugural lecture of Anamde Azikiwe University to be delivered by Professor Nkechi Esomano. We thank you for our university. We thank you for the inaugural lecture series and the committee. We thank you for our vice chancellor, all who contribute to the growth and development of this university. We thank you for the gift of learning and knowledge which we have come to share today. Grant the inaugural lecturer the inspiration. She is called a professor. That we may learn how to be better academics of research. Grant in all that this lecture may be to the growth of humanity and to your greater glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are welcome to the 65th inaugural lecture. We are going to see how the instrument is the glamour of evaluators. Um, may I quickly recognize the presence of the Vice Chancellor of our great university, Professor Charles Okechukwe Simone FAS. Please round of applause for him. And in no particular order, I can, uh, I can see seated Professor Mike Ezenwa, Vice Chairman of the Inaugural Lecture Committee. Please round of applause for him. And I also have here, I also have the chairman of the inaugural lectures committee, the original son of Uwakwe, Professor Richard Uwakwe. A round of applause for him. And of course, uh, seated behind is the provost, our own uh, Professor Philomene Bokwe of our College of Postgraduate Studies. A round of applause. And uh, the director, CEP program of our university, Professor Ngoziago. No. A round of applause. Um, Professor Chukwanuku. Ogam Najias. <laughs> no, a round of applause for him. I can see Professor Ibeneme, uh, research, uh, projects committee. I am a former, don't worry. I'm behind you. Uh, the director, academic planning, Professor Iko Dumego, a round of applause. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> yeah, I can see behind you. Pro I can see Professor Adasa Momeni, Director of Chico Cool Center. Please round of applause for her. And uh, Professor Ikunobi, uh, the last one, I didn't recognize you properly. I am now carrying over the recognition for the chairman of the inaugural lecture. No, he Round of applause. Um, HOD Educational Foundations. No. A round of applause for you too. And I can see. Face mask has covered. Prof. Yes, Professor, please round of applause. And the Deputy Director of GS, uh, Dr. Zenekwe. No. Um, oh, oh, Nekwe Meritus. Professor, you can know you do. Your presence is always there. Uh, it causes me trepidation. Please round of applause. I'm Adam Mbuiji, but no. What uh, uh, Chief, Metinelli Chief, Makafugo Mokume, Chief Esomono. No, please round of applause for the husband of our inaugural lecturer. Inaugural lecturer? No, him. Um, you're going to regale us today. Vice Chancellor, sir. Uh, it's time for your opening remarks. So I most respectfully call you up 
to say a few words. Then the citation reader gets ready. Please, a round of applause for Professor Charles Okichukwe Simone, FAS. Thank you very much. The Provost College of Postgraduate Studies, the Director of Academic Planning, Directors of Continuing Education Program, Director of Chico College Center for Entrepreneurial Studies, other directors and deans who are here, heads of departments, and uh, not forgetting in a very special way, Meritus Professor, Professor Ike Noyido, other uh, students of Faculty of Education and other disciplines in the university, our virtual participants all over the world uh, listening to us. I want to, in a very special way, congratulate in advance the 65th inaugural lecturer, Professor Kichi. Mary Patricia and Sumano. Congratulations. I want the opportunity to congratulate the working husband, the man who has been standing beside her. Whatever Nkechi is today, uh, will attribute it to the direct and indirect levels of chief engineer Sumano. We want to appreciate you, sir. I want to, for this inaugural lecture series, the virtual sessions we have been having. And in doing so, we must not fail to repeatedly thank the chairman of the inaugural lecture committee, this Richard, son of Wakwe, and your team, the wonderful committee. I thank you all for making this possible. You know, now it has become more or less like a tradition in the university that every two we will have this uh, lecture. You know, I've been away for about uh, two weeks. So I missed the last one. Immediately I came back uh, from my trip abroad. I saw my mail that uh, this one scheduled for today again. I said, wow. So we have not lost track. So I thank you sincerely for keeping faith and for making this uh, very important academic activity to, uh, to keep on moving. We are grateful to all our inaugural, past inaugural lecturers, every single one of them uh, in a very special ways have gone to showcase the stuff that we are made of. As an institution, as a university, we all know that teaching, research, community service is our primary mandate. But how do you communicate? How do you communicate the findings? How do you communicate your expertise to the wider world apart from within your immediate classroom environment? Except you have a medium like this where you synthesize where you will uh, prophesy, and uh, you will also propose uh, credit for theorems as an inaugural lecture. So we are very glad. Are we keeping pace with the vision of this administration to promote academic excellence through teaching, through research, through community service? But we are also going the extra mile beyond the you know states of the time to make this happen security has been threatening us but i know that despite that we still come out activities and programs in university lectures are so short but we still come out and today will not be an exception because the inaugural lecture for today is uh, one of the best experts we know in measurement and evaluation all throughout nigeria 
So we will not be surprised, we will not be treated to anything less than our expectations. If at all there's anything, we'll be getting more than we bargained for. So we are, we are glad. I want to use this opportunity also to encourage our colleagues in the university who, one way or the other, uh, have been uh, dragging their feet. Many people want crowd. They want to see physical crowd before they will deliver the inaugural lecture. But this one is one of the best because the crowd that we are not seeing is much more than the crowd that you are, are seeing. It's a, we have a virtual platform. I told us uh, last month or so when I was making a remark that people call me all the way. Somebody even call me from Madagascar, and I'm sure they may, that family may still be listening. Encouraging me that our inaugural lecture series is a very, you know, plausy way of uh, educating them. That they, they make out time whenever they know they come and uh, listen. These are not even academics, but they just enjoy the lecture. Madagascar, people have called from Canada, from Germany, from the US, from different African countries concerning this uh, inaugural lecture. So we encourage our colleagues, please, the stuff we are made of. People outside want to listen to them. They want to, you know, get that knowledge. And you know, inaugural lectures, one of the key features is that you'll be able to come to every class of person. You are not just talking to your peers, not just talking to professors. We'll be able to communicate so that the market on the street, the person who is from village will be able to understand and take your title and professor. How does it concern me? They want to hear that. So you are addressing diverse group of persons. I'm not in a, a mathematics or instrumentation or management and evaluation, but I know very well that as we are going to learn, I'm not preempting you know, the inaugural lecturer, that will discover that life as a whole, you have to involve measurement and evaluation. And instrumentation is a key. And all of us who think that this will not affect us, you will take one thing out of it or the other. So without preempting the inaugural lecture, I said again, we're looking forward to a very exciting time. And I want to encourage all of us who, one way or the other, are supporting this uh, venture, the inaugural lecture, to please uh, keep faith. We look forward to future ones. But that of today, let us relax and uh, enjoy it and make sure, like uh, Chike, they take something home at the end of this. It's my pleasure to uh, welcome the inaugural lecturer and others who will be presenting, the others who will be assisting in the activities of today to carry on with the program. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chancellor, um, for those opening remarks. May I quickly recognize the presence and entry of Professor Enwani? No, it's a round of applause for her. And Professor Tony Mwokoye, I didn't see you earlier. A round of applause too. Thank you for your presences. May I quickly call on the citation reader for the inaugural lecturer in the person of Dr. Uju Ezenekwe. Dr. Ezenekwe, thank you. Good afternoon, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Charles Okechuku Esimode, FAS, the DAP, Professor Ike Odimegu, the inaugural lecturer chairman, Professor Richard Owakwe, Professor Emeritus Ike Onyido, the Provost of the College of Postgraduate Studies, Professor Philo Ibokwe, the Dean of the Faculty of Education, Professor Ikechi Ikediobu. All other protocols duly observed. Citation of Professor Nkechi, Patricia Mary Esomono, Ni Ezani. On the occasion of her inaugural lecture holding today, 18th November, 2021 at Nam Dazikiwe University, Oka. I am highly honored and privileged to read the citation of this great Iroko, an academic guru, an erudite professor by all ramifications, 
a teacher by excellence. Nkechi is someone who is known by many people in diverse ways. And as such, so many accolades to her name. To some people, she's intelligent, but stubborn. To some, dependable, goal-getter, and reliable. And to some others, she is principled, dedicated, and loyal. In all these, there is a synergy and perfect description of our dear Professor Nkechi Isomono. With these descriptions, Nkechi to me is simply a lovely and no-nonsense person, an administrator, a lady who stands for the truth, and a vicious woman, an evaluator, mentor, and distinguished lady. Professor Nkechi is a household name in Namdi Azikiwe University as a whole, and faculty of education in particular, as she needs no introduction, having been a former HOD, Education Foundation, former associate dean in PG school, former dean, former this, former that. Professor Nkechi, as she's fondly called, was born on 28 July 19, in the family of Ishie Norma Diebube, high sent on Umaruju Ezonwa, did not Norma Diebube Magdalene Ebono Ezani from Ifitenansa in Imo State. Professor Nkechi had her early education, her primary school at St. Charles Primary School, Ifitenansa, and secondary school at Community Secondary School, Awoide Mili, and Nigeria People's High School, Lagos, 1979. She proceeded to the University of Lagos, where she banged her BSc in Education Biology. Her quest for education and being a daughter of a teacher, her father returned as senior supervisor of schools. She went further for her higher degree at UNN from 1989 and obtained master's in education in science education biology. Nkechi did not stop at that. She obtained professional officer's induction course from Government Staff Training Center, Makodi, in 1990. Aselia described by one of her colleagues as highly intelligent. She also proved herself in the field of her career by obtaining her PhD from Unnam Dazikiwe University in educational evaluation, measuring in statistics, measurement, and research, which is yet to showcase to us today in 1998. Professor Nkechi also has to her advantage certificate of proficiency in computer in 2006 and Teachers Registration Council of Nigeria, TRCN certificate of registration in June 2009. That's another certificate I want to have. After this, Professor Nkechi, I will come back to you for that. E. Patricia Mary Somono was pronounced a professor on October 1, 2011. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, it may interest you to know that she was the first female professor in Anambra State and the first female professor in Ifitenansa, Imo State, for a great scholar like Nkechi. Professor Nkechi started her early career with Federal College of Education Technical Omonze in June 1990 to September 2005, where she left her footprints on the sands of time before moving over to Namda Zikiwe University. Of in October 2005. While in Omunze, she held many positions, all attributed to her dedication, hard work, and sincerity. Some of the positions are Director School of Technical Certificates, Sandwich Program, Acting Director School of General Education, Education and TTC, College Coordinator, Student Research Projects, and so many others, even Governing Education. Having achieve, achieved a lot at women's education, Professor Nkechi moved over to Namda Zikiwe University of October 2005. Here at UNIT, she displayed her passion for the organization's mission and vision, values collaboration, team building, and quality work. All these and her various administrative positions like PG coordinator, master's degree, 2006, barely entering in Namda Zikiwe, head of department, seventh university governing council, associate dean, school of postgraduate, board chairman, Unisic Nursery and Primary School, a Unisic High School, director of affiliate institution affairs, Unisic, coordinator of research and statistics for PG and undergraduate projects, and many others. Professor Nkechi is also commended and appreciated 
both from UNISIC and College of Education for understanding performances that she has done. One among them is that the Vice Chancellor's commendation of the Dean for organizing the workshop on utilization of the university email and web program page in 2017. Also, deep appreciation for a rare honesty exhibited in the refund of three months' salaries, including the arrears of monetization benefits, totally to 499,278 Kobo. You can see the caliber of the person we are here to listen to today. Another great commendation of Unkechi is by the immediate past Vice Chancellor of Unanda Zikiwe University, Professor Joseph Eberendo Haneku, FAS, recommended in Kechi when she was the Dean of the Faculty of Education on her developmental strides. This he did while commissioning the landscape faculty executed by the Dean in her tenure. He described Professor Isomono as hardworking while calling on to emulate her good works in the faculty. Professor Nkechi also wrote in a lecture series that was published in the Committee of Provosts of Federal Colleges of Education in Nigeria while she was at Omonze. Professor Ba, membership of learned societies, so many of them, and these societies are part of what was also lead to her visibility and the Vision 200 that our Vice Chancellor's mission is. She is a member of Nigeria Academy of Education. She is a member of World Council of Curriculum and Institution. She is a member of the Association. In Kechi is also a member of Educational Assessments and Research Network in Africa. She is a member of Nigerian Society of Education Psychologists and so many of them. Also, she was chosen for distinguished to the Research Board of Advisors by the Board of the General Board of Editors and Publisher, Publication Board for the American Biographical Institute, but she has been since 2000. Professor Nkechi, in her hard work in research, have also been an editor in chief and member of editorial boards, so many journals, so many of them, I'll just list a few of them. Nigerian University Journal of Education, Anambra State Journals, Nunastan, International Journal of Educational Research Development, Journal of Women in Colleges of Education, Journal of Women in Colleges of Education as their board, and also Empirical, Journal of Empirical Research in Science and Technology. Professor Nkechi is a doer and not a monarch. She's an action lady, and she has showcased it in various ways, as she chairman so many, so many boards, about 45 or more of them, which I cannot list here. I will just give some few of them. She was the chairman, Faculty of Education Examination Misconduct Committee from 2014 to 2016. You can agree that this is a committee that someone with integrity and high moral standard must be given to. I've been a member of that committee in my faculty and I know what it is. So from Kechi to hold to be the chairman of misconduct committee also shows us the caliber of the person we are here to listen to today. Kechi is also chairman, Department of Education, Curriculum Committee, Educational Board, um, Chairman Admission Committee, Ad Hoc Chairman, Speeches Drafting Committee, and so many others. Chairman is Sophia Education Trust, appointment by Sofa People's Union, federated to oversee all matters relating to education, including scholarships and linkages. So I think Ikechi is really linking us to the rest of the world. And she also has to her credit about 62 other committees that she belongs to. Yet she's a professor of evaluation. And being that, she has also been added in the evaluation of so many programs, NCE, Vocational and Technical Education, Panelist Member, National Commission for Education, Accreditation Team in both, most of the federal colleges of education, Ihamufu, Tinkaskona, IMT, Osisatek, and the rest of them. 
team member TROC and accreditation for one for reason. Nkechi, a renowned professor, have successfully supervised five PhDs and so many MSCs to her credit. I cannot list all of them here. The topics which she supervised them on, which is also related to her evaluation. Nkechi also have also been a external examiner to so many schools. University of Port Harcourt, Michael Obara University, Ebony State University, Idahosa, Benson Idahosa University, and Ebony State University, Abakliki. In summary, Nkechi have published 58 journal articles, both regional, international, and local. She has eight chapters in edited books, 12 books edited seven books, 17 volumes of journal edited books, periodical edited seven, and keynote lead paper and other invectives 30. Even with 19, it did not deter Professor Nkechi to carry on with our work. While I know that some of us can't even operate the system, not to talk of joining conferences online, but Nkechi did that during the COVID, showing she wasn't idle. Either. Her religion, okay. Academic staff, you know, leadership. I won't fail to mention that. Fred in Kechi this time around, not professor, is a strong activist who stands with the union's ideologies and with her reliable personality. She the union in various capacities. Internal Auditor 2012-2013, Convener Chairman Membership Drive Tax Force, Convener Chairman Election Tribunal, Convener Chairman National Strike Violation Committee, Convener Chairman Committee for Collection of Areas of Chekhov, Convener Chairman Ethics and Grievance Committee, Convener Chairman ASU NAU Visitation Panel Drafting Committee for Presidential Visitation Panel to uni Universities 2021. I worked closely with her in this because I was the secretary of that committee and I learned a lot from. Nkechi, comrade Nkechi. Thank you so much, ma. Her religious life. Nkechi is an ardent Christian of the Catholic de denomination, and she said the church in various categories. She's equally a lady of the order of Semulumba. Nkechi has been a president both in CWO and even at the ladies of Semulumba. She has been part of the Dasisan Pastoral Council and so many other things. Nkechi also sponsors over 2,000 ladies girls on the sacrament of the confirmation in three parishes and two schools. And she has won for herself some matters. One of them is outstanding organization, so president for compliance to standards. This is what she stands for. In case she cannot be there and will go wrong. It must be according to won the prize winner as outstanding organizer, president for prompt financial commitment to Peter University from 2015 to 2017. Kudos to you. Award of Ambassador of Christ by Women Wing of Christian Association, where we can. Above all this, her career, religious activities, the woman standing before us here has a chieftaincy title. She is a chief. Yes. <laughs> so Nkechi is all rounder. She's a cabinet chief confirmed by Igwe in council and the Sofia People's Union with the title Ugo Mota Amaka Ni Sofia 2015. It did not end at Sofia, her marital place. She, she is also a cabinet chief in Amadiaba, if it announced a town in Imo State, with the title Eziada Buruburu. 2014. This goes a long way to show that Professor Kechi is covering her wings very, very well, both at Imo State, her state of origin, and Anambra State, her marital formulation by the younger generation. Professor Kechi Patricia Mary Simone is natural and sweet at. Engineer Martins Ndibem is Simono, an electrical electronic engineer with Federal College of Education Technical, Omonze. The marriage is four wonderful children, 
Ebube Faustina Princess, Pascal Chukwebuka, Nada Bruno, Angolibe Clara. What wonderful names for the wonderful children given to them. Vice Chancellor, sir, professors, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it is my single honor to present to you the 65th inaugural lecturer, a lady with a golden heart, a scholar by excellence, an erudite professor of evaluation, a great researcher, teacher, and mentor, a goal getter, an achiever, an intelligent and absolute administrator, a loving and caring wife, person of Professor Nkechi Patricia Mary Isomono, to do justice to what she good at as she delivers her lecture on instrumentation, the glamour of evaluators. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice Chancellor. Not knowing where to start. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor of Fernanda Zekiwe University, the person of Professor Kechukuchas, it's money, FAS. Because I know that people are listening outside here, streamed online, I also want to recognize other Vice Chancellor of the university. Members of the Covenant Council, Deputy Vice Chancellors, Academic and Administration, Principal Officers of the University, Provost College of Health Sciences, and then Provost School of Postgraduate Studies. Deans of faculties, distinguished professors, directors and heads of department, distant academics and colleagues. Inaugural Lecture Committee, His Royal Highnesses, Ndishe, Deans and Ozo, Captains of Industry, family members and friends. I personally want to recognize Dean Faculty of Education and past deans because they are here. Professor Ibeneme Ogo is here. Professor Ada Samome is here. And other deans that are here. Uh, great students, members of the press. I to talk about our emeritus professor. In fact, when I saw him coming in, I was there. Uh, do I merit him coming upstairs for this lecture? I salute you. So other professors here, my HUD, have I talked about you? Dr. Onyebushi. I can see the associate provost G school, Professor Ikunife. The former associate dean, Professor Mike. Then, Wao Wakwe, you and your group, Professor. So, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. My topic is instrumentation, the glamour of evaluators. Um, so all my listeners, I want you to smile because we have come for glamour. So uh, on the memory lane, after my secondary school, I went to University of Lagos. I got my BSc in biology. I went to University of Nigeria in Soka. I had my master's in education. Along the line, I felt the need to tilt a little to enable me to have a satisfaction uh, research in science education. So I registered for master's and PhD program. I was exposed to all the courses in master's degree, did their seminar, all the courses in PhD, in the thesis. And after that, I think I had been enjoying the versatility of that area of educational evaluation, research, and statistics. I got employed to Federal College of Education Technical Museum, where I rose through ranks and became chief lecturer in 2002. In 2005, 
I also got employed to Nandas Kiwan University. I also, as a senior lecturer, in 2008, I was made a reader. And in 2011, I was made a professor. So we have been on, we queued on for this inaugural lecture. I thank God it's happening today. And rather now, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I want to tell you that professors in educational foundations are warming up. That came now and they will start presenting. Why? Because I'm kicking off inaugural lecture presentation in the Department of Educational Foundation. So let's look at just the concepts of what we are about to talk about. We have educational evaluation. What is it? Well, it is qualitative and quantitative judgment of people's behavioral changes. If you want to look at it from a broader perspective, the process of collecting relevant data about educational practices, determine the parts, the level of desirability of a change for decision making. So we look at educational evaluators, who are the educational evaluators? That are persons trained in quantitative psychology or in educational measurement, evaluation, research, and statistics. There are measurement experts and psychometricians. So what is instrumentation? What is instrumentation? Instrumentation is a context award to so different professions. They call it different things. The physical scientist is, to him, is a set of tools for carrying out experiments or apparatus. The process engineer, uh, process sensors, heater elements, and stuff like that. The electrical engineer, they talk of digital voltmeters, frequency counters, and so on. Now, so educational evaluator. It is a science of construction, validation, reliability estimation, naming and stating the conditions for administration of measurement devices or instruments. It is calibration of instruments for measurements. So what are these instruments? Instruments are measuring devices or tools or anything that can be used to assign numbers to observation, to features or to tricks. Education, psychological instruments dominate, unlike in physical sciences. So what are the examples? These are the common things we know and people have been using. We have tests, inventories, interviews, questionnaire, and other records, social metrics, portfolios, rating scale, models, rubrics, checklists, and a whole lot of them. These instruments are used for classroom assessment and research. So what is this assessment we are talking about? Assessment is a process of observing, quantifying, and appraising the learner's change in behavior in the cognitive, affective, psychomotor domains for decision making. That is assessing the entire person. You assess the entire person, you assess the behavior, you assess what he can do with his hands and leg body movements, assess the way he thinks. So assessment data, when we do this, we have a data. So assessment data, we use it for to determine learning progress, improve teaching, motivate students, diagnose learning difficulties, provide guidance and counseling services, and certificate people. So traditionally, there are summative and formative evaluation. When we talk of summative evaluation, it's the type of assessment carried out at the end of an event, end of a program, end of a course, end of a activity. It focuses to confirm, the focus is to confirm what students have learned and can demonstrate. Ascertain whether or not they have met curriculum outcomes or goals, issue certificates, that is summative. And the instruments we use are standardized tests, moderated teacher made tests. I have, to, I have to emphasize moderated because we are in academic institution. Some people, when they say their questions, you ask them for moderation, they will tell you no. And they just go and administer. Moderated, moderated. Second eyes, many other eyes need to see your questions. If you have integrity, nothing will happen. This is why we need to put people of integrity along the line. So if you're a HOD with integrity, the HOD that has integrity can look at your questions and nothing will happen. Professor of integrity can look at your questions, nothing will happen. So I have to emphasize that. So projects, rubrics, and others. 
Summative assessment is akin to assessment of learning. So we have formative assessment. Formative assessment is a type of assessment that is carried out when teaching and learning are ongoing. The sole aim is to facilitate learning and not for grading. It is collecting information for use as part of teaching and learning. In formative assessment, we have what we call assessment for learning and assessment as learning. So what type of formative assessment do we call assessment for learning? It intends to provide information to enhance learning when the teaching learning in. The key thing when it is assessment for learning is that it gives you descriptive feedback with your students so that they will know how they are faring and that will stimulate them. So for a teacher, you use it to group, determine instructional strategy and resources that further enhance learning. It can take place throughout the learning process. Then we have assessment as learning. So when will assessment be as learning because it's a formative type of assessment? It is seen as an active process of cognitive restructuring. It emphasizes assessment as a process of metacognition. Here students are the critical connectors between assessment and learning. It focuses on what students will do for themselves as a result of learning. Students personally monitor what they're learning and make personal adjustments. Somebody will ask, how would this happen? If you are in the class and you want to do assessment as learning, you will provide exemplars, models, anything you teach, bring out people who have perfected in it, bring out issues, the perfect aspect of it so that the child will be looking at it. So this small thing and looking at you are telling me, if I do it well, I will be like this person. I will produce this, I'll produce this. So even when you are talking in the class, the child is down framing on how to further what you have said so that he can be like that model. The other one, the other one. So that is what assessment as learning has to do with cognition. A child monitoring his or her learning, deciding where to go. You are, in, you are a teacher in the class talking. The child is already making up how he's going to frame something outside the classroom. That is assessment as learning. So we look at, we are talking about instruments. We look at standardized and non-standardized tests or instruments. When we say standardized tests or instruments, there are measuring devices developed following the procedure led down by experts. That is the evaluators. When you follow their procedure, you have a standardized test. Do that later. So these standardized tests will have uniform procedure for administration and scoring, and they are accompanied by manual. But when we talk of non-standardized tests or instruments, we are talking about teacher-made instruments or tests that have not undergone all the rigorous steps stipulated by experts, but you must have gone to some steps. We'll see that later. Psychometric properties of instruments. When we say this, it's simply validity measures and validity measures. What is validity measures? Validity. The extent to which an instrument presents the objective it intends to measure. The degree to which evidence and theory support the interpretation of scores from an instrument. When we talk of this validity, sometimes it looks as if what are they really talking about? We're talking about an instrument. For instance, I'm talking to you. If we assume that this is a classroom, I can measure your understanding of what I've said. If I want to measure it, there are so many instruments. I can get my tape and put it on your head. So when I do that, will I be able to measure your understanding? So it's not valid. When I want to do that, I now begin to frame questions. Frame questions that we draw from you, your understanding. So that question becomes a valid instrument for the measurement. So, so we talk of reliability. is a degree of consistency to which an instrument measures an attribute it is supposed to measure. It tells us to what extent we can expect stable reading from repeated measurements. A reliable instrument is one in which individual differences indicated by the measurement scores reflect actual 
and real differences in the skills and the abilities possessed by the candidates. We are just looking at the concept that will lead us into the glamour of this lecture. So we have theories of instrumentation. Instrumentation are anchored on theories. Some of the theories is classical test theory, generality theory, item response theory, hurdles of instrumentation in education. What are these hurdles? You see that in measurement of any type, there is problem of approximation, problem of prediction, problem of validity and reliability. When you come to this hurdle, you see number has identity, has order, it has identity properties. In education, numbers are assigned to objects and events that do not possess these properties. So the problem of approximation, precision, validity, and predict prediction comes up. It comes up and is more serious in education than in natural sciences. And secondly, the attributes measured in education are not directly observable. Just like I've given an example, I put a tape on your head to see whether you understand what I've said. It will not work. So you will measure attributes through indicators. So it's an indirect measurement. So the problem of precision, reliability, validity assume greater dimension. And this is where an evaluator stands out. Trying to cross this hurdle is where it stands out to do the work and help others. So the glamour of evaluators in instrumentation is how to help people valid and reliable instruments. So the glamour of the evaluator. Mr. Vice Chancellor, my respected distinguished audience, my contribution to knowledge in this interesting area of educational measurement, evaluation research and statistics, I discussed under the following subheadings, works in classical test theory, works in generality theory, works in item response theory, models, services in instrumentation. So let's look at works in classical test theory. So what is classical test theory? There are so many things that she talks about, but I will just single out the one that concerns instrumentation. Classical theory posits that every you give, every measurement you have is made up, we call that one observable because that's what you have observed, is made up of a true score, the real score and error. So it talks about the observed score having a true score and undifferentiated error variance. This is what classical theory talks about directly on instrumentation. So the true score is observed score that would have been obtained if there were no errors in measurement. The glamour of the evaluator. On the basis of this theory, we have developed and calibrated certain instruments which have been extensively used for research and evaluation within and outside the country. Mr. Vice Chancellor, this is the glamour of evaluators. We just look at those, watch through those items. In 1995, Esomono uh, developed and validated a diagnostic progress test in biology. What was the problem or issue? Biology is a subject almost every student registers in external examination in secondary school. To some, it is the only science subject they register. So the teachers need to teach in such a way that everybody passes at least at credit level. There are many things a teacher could do to achieve better performance on the side of the student. One of them is mastery learning. It's one of the things he can do. So this instrument was developed to assist teachers in the classroom to implement mastery learning. What is mastery learning? Mastery learning is a theory of learning where when you apply it effectively, having the correct instrument, it will move, shift the normal curve to the left. So it's not, it's not a question of you give exams, some will have A, some must fail or have C, then the book will be on the model. No, if you do machine learning, in fact, many people will have A. So, and to implement it, the, the most difficult task is to construct the instrument for it. 
So that instrument was constructed to serve the purpose. So this is what will happen if you use mastery test. And this, the, this, the, the difficulty in mastery test is to construct instruments. And that's what I've done. Because in that, the instrument you will construct, you are going to have a table of station that is not the normal one you see. Every item must have a linkage prerequisite. What is prerequisite for it, for you to answer this? And when you answer this, the next step. So that linkage is what you do. And this is not what a classroom teacher can do easily. So the evaluators do this, put it in the literature, and they use it. So in 1979, inventories for program evaluation was developed by SMON. Most of our educational programs are not evaluated. At the higher education level, one we say we do accreditation. Yes, but accreditation is a summative evaluation. You pass or you fail. Even when you have interim, what is starting before you within two years is either you pass or you fail. There will be no other interim. So it's summative by the outsider. So there is need for program evaluation at the formative level. At the formative level is for corrective measures. And we need that so that the summative will come out right. That's why I developed this instrument and validated it. There were four of them. Graduate tracer study questionnaire, employment employer survey questionnaire, teaching practice questionnaire, student industrial work experience questionnaire. The trace has been adopted and adapted in many studies. Even at a time, after many years, I use it myself. I use it to carry out three studies. I use it to evaluate to, uh, uh, evaluation of products of Nigerian vocational and technical education program. I also use to uh, evaluation of teaching practice in federal colleges of education technical, the evaluation of the vice industrial work experience scheme. But the first one, evaluation of the products of Nigerian vocational and technical education program. In fact, I got a striking result. In this research, it was found that the graduates of this program were able to teach and practice their skills. I had no problem in my discussion because I visited these colleges and I discovered that the environment of their learning is better than some engineering faculties in some universities. I will tell you this. Even when the students are there, they were given job by the college to build. They will be, we see this building, they say it's done by students of Lokshana. You see this one, they say, it's, so they were practicing. And they teach and practice. So it's not a question of I can good work and I can build a very beautiful full strength. No, out of it. So, so that's the instrument that people have been using. They have been adapting it and they have been adopting. So we have in 2014, integrated science process skill test was developed by Esomono and Anoko. What is the science process skill? The fundamental capability of intellectual skills utilizing science. It is a prerequisite for understanding scientific concepts. In fact, when you go to any government document that talks about science, you must see that there will be uh, this uh, in, uh, science process skills. And they will say that it has to be developed in students. It has to be. So what is the, pro uh, the problem that we want, you will want to solve on this? There is need for teachers to adequately teach the skills during science lessons. However, after teaching the skills, teachers need to validate, to, they need valid and reliable tests for evaluating mastery of students. You can say a teacher said the question. <laughs> it's not as easy as that. Most of them can set achievement tests. And even at that, they will always source from literature. And when they're sourcing from literature, push literature. It is the evaluators that populate those things they see in, in the literature. You want to set the question, you browse. You take this one here, take this one, take this one. Who are putting them there? It's the evaluators. And those things, items you pick that are valid and reliable. By looking at them, you can have one or two from your own. So that is our job. So we have um, achievement tests for biology in 2006. Uh, the test was to reteach and remedial, remedial purposes. And in this test, we incorporated the information source and techniques in item construction. So that anybody that gets this test know 
or have idea of how to improve his or her test. That was the problem that this one solved. Then we also have achievement tests in secondary school economics. That one is by a woman and this someone. So to help alleviate the problem of scarcity of valid and reliable instruments. And this one, because these are the things we have that are there published. Then we have, um, in 2016, we have an inventory for measuring students' integration into university academic culture. This particular instrument has been used over and over. So a lot of people use this. Even January this year, one nursing school, in one university in India, they wrote, can we use this instrument? Of course, we tell them, please use. People have been using it without even consulting us. So instrument has uh, factors, sense of belonging, acceptance of university rules and regulation, especially in university activity. What actually was the problem? The increase in dropout rates, substance use, cultism and other different behaviors in Nigerian universities made it necessary for one to ask the extent to which university students were integrated into the university academic. That was what led us to this. And we didn't know that the people would be so much interested in it and are using it. So we have the diagnostic economics test for secondary school. This was by Bidenes, Somono, Eleje, Ago, Kokoye, and the rest of us. So what led us to this? You see, if you look at chief examiner's report, for about three consecutive years before this, they were saying that people were failing because of the quantitative skill, that they lack the quantitative skill, and that we need to teach that. Then how do you teach it? How do you assess it? It's not just teaching. Then we developed this test. And this one needed an accompanying test, which we also developed. So, okay, I think I've dropped that one. That one is on achievement. After diagnosis, there is an achievement test we also did. Then this one is a mathematics. So from literature and for our knowledge, we know that attitude has so much to do with what people do in the class. Then, so we have to develop this instrument. You can see a lot of attitudes on senior secondary school. So we now do this one in junior secondary school, which is uncommon, and develop this attitude test that has enjoyment of mathematics, value of mathematics, self-confidence in solving mathematics problem and peer pressure as factors in that instrument. Then we have, okay, that's, uh, this is the that second uh, test that accompanied the diagnostic. So we have students' sociophobia scale. These students' for the social phobia scale, what's the problem? The aim was to develop indigenous instruments to elicit sociophobia that may inhibit students' learning. See. When social phobia is remedied, achievement can be improved. And it has five factors, fear of people in authority, fear of me, fear of being criticized by others, fear of public speaking, fear of performing in the public. So this instrument is there. So um, that's the glamour in item classical test theory. So let's look at another theory and the, can we see the glamour of evaluators? works in generality theory. So um, generality theory is used to determine the reproduci reproducibility of measurements under specific condition. It's a statistical model technique that estimates reliability when multiple factors are identified as contributing to the observed score variance. See, in a layman's language, what is this theory talking about? We have seen classical test theory that says that once you have a score that is true score, the true performance of the student and the error that can come from any angle. It could be from the items itself, could be from the students, it could be from the examination conditions, it could be from the, the facets, you know, different facets. So, but this theory is an extension of that one. Is that saying, yes, there is error, but it's not undifferentiated. There are components to it. That if you are able to locate the components, you can solve it, you can reduce it. In terms of instrumentation, the interesting part of G theory is that it has what we call decision study. What does decision study do? It optimizes the measurement conditions. 
You have seen the errors. You have seen the sources. What do we do? What do we do to improve the examination conditions? We have about three. Well, I think I've said this one, the need and the problems. I've talked about them. Or rather, let's look at it. They need to improve students' achievement was the driving force behind the works we did under this. So students have low performance in mathematics examination. Raw score students are used in taking relative and absolute decisions about students. So the work we did, we tried to optimize some public examination. So in the public examination, we have estimating the effects of the instrumentation facets and their interaction in score dependability in the examination by GTO. That is by Simona and Okaba. What did we find? We find that the facet item contributed about 18% of the measurement error. Item and marker were not significantly different in their contribution to score dependability. What was optimization? Optimization is that the NACO should set about 10 questions and we scored by two persons. So, because at the benchmark, we have the dependability of 0 0.93. So for it to come, they, will, they should have 10 questions in their essay in mathematics with two markers. Before they were having five, but now they're having 10. So they need to do more. They need to add one more marker. So, then this instrument on, so this is the second work on that. The instrument on uh, measuring stress integration. Because we saw that a lot of people were using this instrument, we decided to uh, optimize it. At the optimizing level, we now discover that we need to raise the items to 100 for us for it to meet the benchmark of dependability. So the researchers are yet to review it. So that's another work that is for us. We have to review it. People are still using it, but we review it and they will have a better instrument to use. Works on item response theory. So is there any glamour here for evaluators? Let's see whether there's any glamour. So what this item response theory, what does it talk about? Item response theory possesses that the probability of an examiner answering an item correctly in a test is dependent on the ability of the examiner and the parameters of the item. The major benefit of item response theory approach in test development is that the parameters of the person do not depend on the parameters of the item or vice versa. So therefore, ROIT framework and models make instruments sample dependent. So it does not matter on whom they are using it. So if you develop instruments with ROIT, any, any, it can meet any group of people. It does not depend on them. And you see that a lot of items that are circulating in literature now most of them were done by classical test theory. So we need to move into this so that we have um, I, uh, item dependent, uh, sample dependent items. So that is not where you go to rural area, it will function differently. You go to urban area, it functions differently. You go to high class, you know, where people are performing, function differently. So we need to bring our test to this level. So we did a number of work there. And in talking about item response, there are terms they use talk about parameters. We talk about difficulty in this. How difficult is the item? But that of RIT, we look at it as parameter. It looks at a parameter that is difficulty, B parameter that's difficulty, A parameter that is discrimination index. And then the guessing factor, that is C. And what does that one talk about? A candidate may have a low ability answering a question, but he can get it right by guessing. Then we have the fourth one, carelessness factor, parameter. The candidate may be, be intelligent. He has the capacity to answer a question, but out of carelessness, he will not be able to answer it. That's why we talk about error in measurements and how to handle it. So these are the models. There are four models. One parameter logistic model, that is the difficulty I have explained. Two parameter model, logistic model, that is difficulty. Um, discrimination, please. There is an error there. We have the three, the guessing factor and the four, the carelessness factor. 
So using this theory, we have developed this uh, item, diagnostic quantitative tests. What are the issues? To provide valid and reliable instrument that is sample independent to identify the learning difficulties in quantitative economics. And the characteristics, we will see the test characteristics there. So we'll not waste time there. So this is another test that we use the RIT to develop to reduce the scarcity of valid and reliable tests in sample dependent. Because most of the tests now in the literature where people copy items from that sample dependent. So we want them to move to sample independent items. That's why we are populating the literature with these items and they're helping teachers and those who want to use it. So for these two tests, we looked at diagnostic tests, a kind of test we use to uh, find out students' learning difficulties. Very important for a classroom teacher, difficult to construct. That's why we do that, the experts do that and keep it for teachers who are interested because some teachers are not interested, they just come and go. Some teachers struggle around their students to make sure they pass. Such teachers, they look for this kind of test and they use it. So the two tests, we use them to carry out a number of studies ourselves. The effect of diagnosis testing on students' achievements in secondary school economics. We also looked at students' academic achievements in secondary school, effect of feedback and remediation, we have the third one we call bed by caesarean section and academic achievement in adolescence and randomized control trials by many authors. Test of achievement in basic statistics. This one is for higher institution. So many students perceive statistics as difficulty. There is need for the measurement tool that we accurately assess the level of understanding. That's why we did this one for people in higher institution. Then we have a case where there is a problem of decline in French enrollment caused by stress and poor performance of students in French language and public examination. So there is lack of diagnostic tests to determine the root causes of students' poor language skills. That led us to this based on chief examiner's reports. We did this, push it on, published, then people can use it or adapt or adapt from it. That's why we have this one. So then we have the geography. Geography was suffering the same fate as French in the school system. So we now have diagnostic, diagnostic tests. The one we do in the class, most of 90% is achievement. So we do this diagnosis for real teachers, people who are interested, trying to bring up new generation of people that the people that when they see this test, they come and experiment that in their class. And that's the place to go now. So then we have mathematics proficiency tests used by teachers that are published. Then all this one, uh, even as I'm talking now, I've said that CTT is sample dependent, RIT is sample independent. I've said that here. And there are a number of literature that's not consistent on it. So when we have the statistic diagnostic test, we decided to look at it to see how it functions. What were our, our results? The results of the study showed that CTT and RIT were comparable in terms of item difficulty and item discrimination. There was more item mortality with CTT than RIT. The reliability indices were slightly higher with RIT. It was concluded that item parameters and test characteristics were better with RIT than CTT. So it's better to use instruments that is uh, um, sample independent than that, that's the one that is sample dependent. So there are a lot of questions people ask about instruments. What of the classes, the, the exams we use, some of the exams, are they predictable? Can they predict? Are they dependent? Are they valid? Because it's on instrumentation, based on that work, we carried out a lot of um, predictive studies. Three of them are the ones showcased here. And we discovered and some of our exams, especially the BESC, the BCC, this junior, what they call junior work, and that by different states. Many of them has the relative 
and composite predictive validity. Fish, many people say it does not have. Many of them do have. So, what some models? What some models? What is the glamour of the evaluator? I personally developed two models. I developed a model for program evaluation. And that model in literature is called in Keche Summon Program Evaluation Model. And you see that you have objective. Every evaluation is done against objective. So you first of all have identified that. Then what is the gap? Why are you going into this? You must look for it. So it's not a question of you just enter and begin to evaluate. No, you must look for it. What are the needs before you continue? Then you have the inputs. You have the processes. If you look at the process, you see that we have process one, process two, and process three. That means that to have more processes. What is the process in educational setting? It is the interaction of the inputs. The multi-interaction, multi-dimensional interaction. A teacher is an input in case. System a student is. Textbook is. The multi the interaction between a teacher and the student is a process. You can evaluate that. With a textbook, you can talk of readability of textbook. These are processes. Then we have the outcome, we have the impact. And you can also see that the impact has a one, two, and care. It could be social impact, economic impact, technological impact, educational impact, and so on. So another model, instrumentation model. In literature, we have this as a case someone instrumentation model. Developed in 2015 and uh, reversed in 2021. So this is the, the steps you need to go through for you to have a standardized test. I want to talk particularly about step two, test blueprint. So when you go through this step, you have a standardized test. When you start and end somewhere, it will be a teacher-made test. But I want to tell my audience that the step one and step two is compulsory for teachers from primary C to the highest, no matter what you teach, to the highest. What is table of specification? Test blueprint. It is the table that matches the content with the objective. We have level of objective, understanding, comprehension, application, interpretation. These are, are levels you develop in your students while you teach. The first level knowledge is recall. What is your name? If you say call your name, what, what is that? But it gets a, 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 a place where you begin to teach the person to draw comparison from the person, to draw synthesis, to be able to separate components. Then, so that you match the content with this objective. For instance, if somebody has taught a course, you have three topics, or you taught for three hours, one topic, spend two hours, another one, one hour. If you're setting a question, I use test blueprint. You will expect at least three questions. And two, we come from the one that you taught for two hours. And then the one you taught for one hour will be one question. So there will be no case questioner who come out and say, the topics I read did not come. No, 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 no. Invalid instrument. If you read half of the course taught to you, you should be struggling for marks, under 50 marks. So you read half and you have a, you cannot. That means the instrument given to you was not valid, was not reliable. The teacher did not use test blueprint. He was just setting anything that comes to his head, he said. The one that he likes most, he said, no. So every teacher, that's what I'm saying, must go and use this a test blueprint in setting your question anywhere, any course, no matter the level. So how do you do it? You should find that, meet the evaluators. That's their glamour. So this is a sample of a very small of test blueprints. This one, I think I did in 2005. I just copied it. I used the old uh, educational objective. For instance, in the old one, we have evaluation as the highest but now we have beauty as the highest so services in instrumentation where is the glamour of the evaluators 
instrumentation. Instrument validation. Psychological instruments are validated by two experts. So we have two experts. Instrument specialists, they are the evaluators. We have the subject experts. So every educational research and evaluation instrument passes through an evaluator. So therefore, an evaluator is a constant consultant in instrumentation. It's a constant consultant. So on average, I do validate over 30 instruments annually across departments and across universities. And some who have time do more than this. You see that people will keep on pursuing you, giving you those things to do. I call it services we render. So services, let's see the evaluator. We have, a, I was one time associate dean humanities, head of research and development unit at PG school. Here in Nanda Square University, I led the team that developed the almighty SPGS catalog of funds. And then the rubrics for PG and dissertation assessment. When this form was developed, digitalization was a simple matter in PG school. You do any function in PG school, you are given a form. There is no application. You fill it. And the one that you interest us is that we are paid our allowances. So because once you finish any action, they give you a form to fill. You fill that and fill your back details. You have to go home. Won't be a lot. You carry out any action in PG school. It's still there. The, the provost is here. Okay, I can see the author of catalog of funds, Professor Harry Sodimewu. I worked under him. See, a student carries out a particular thing in his work. He fills a form. So it's not a question of who will be the witness. No, the form is there. So when they are changing you, the form will bear you witness. It will save you. Because every action taken, done by a student is recorded. That is filled. It's not a case of coming, but you were there, they died defended. No, 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 we don't need the such stories. The forms are there. And as these things we are going on, we have survey. It got a time people were, because it was new, and they started, that started receiving the alert. So when they started receiving the alert, they now stopped criticizing. So we, they, they had a way of channel of communication. So the, the result of that survey shows that information provided by then SPGS, we are very clear. That means valid and reliable forms make communication effective. This is the glamour of an evaluator. So within that period, we also started, the, the school started screening exams. They were taking screening exams and noise here and there, praises and criticism, we went in for this. And we have the FCGPA correlated with the screening test score. What did they find? We now discovered that the correlation was very low. In fact, the coefficient of determination was below 20%. Well, the work of an evaluator is to provide information for decision taking. That's all. I think the dean then took this into PG board after looking at the result. They took their decision. And I think that's still doing it now. Probably is that right? That's still doing the screening based on that. So I also say that even when I was the dean, faculty of education, I used formative evaluation to draw out the best from my committees without them knowing. I use formative evaluation. And my committees, they were working and producing results. At the end, we were. That is the glamour of an evaluator. So, um, resources for TRCN instrumentation, uh, since they started computer something, resource person seminar on non cognitive assessment. Education and trained as resource person for JAM, critical assessment competencies. I call these things services on instrumentation. As we are talking about glamour of evaluators, instrumentation is also a band to them. They're bad. You see, there are skills of, instrumentation skills are often demanded from an evaluator, anywhere, any place. So some, 
careless educational evaluators may fail to develop such skills. When they do that, they may be wanting in the field of educational research and evaluation. Is there students who consult them? Such students may face structural problems at the defense, and sometimes they repeat. So it's not only a glamour, it is a two-edged sword. It can be the other way around. So, challenges to this. First one is exam misconduct. Sometimes it's like all our effort in instrumentation is sacrificed at the altar of examination manifests. It looks like that. Examination manifests that hit every examination portray teachers as incapable of effectively evaluating their students. See, and the very unfortunate thing now is that some of the products of this exam manifests are in the classroom now. So but the question is, who will police the police? So it's a problem. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, how will you feel if you discover that some of the certificates you endorse are main indicators of the level attended and not attend? So how will you feel? <laughs> we talk of politics of challenges, of evaluation. So evaluation has a lot of politics. Why? Because it's judgment. It's passing judgment. And therefore, it is anxiety prone. That's why, whether it is an individual or institution or a group of people are facing examination, there is anxiety. And that's why people do a lot of things, even in accreditation, cut corners. And you see, because of the politics in it, some people may feel that some institutions, I mean, some, some, some institutions are too big to fail, even when they have not done well. You see some external examiner, when you invite them, they will look at the materials and they will feel about giving a particular score. And we say, that is the score I will give now, they will not invite me again. That is the politics of evaluation. So, well, teachers teaching without teaching qualification, we know this is a lot of government documents have talked about that is a because if you undergo this pedagogy, you get rudiments of skills in instrumentation. So these are challenges. What is the current focus on research activity? Current now, we are moving to big data and instrumentation thereof. That's where we are moving in our current research. So what is big data? The big data are quantum bulky of, of, of data that cannot be handled by traditional methods. And Characterized by volume, comes in rapid succession, speed. Talk about heterogeneity, comes varied instruments, structured and unstructured. It can be biased, there will be noise in it. Utility of this data. Why do we have this? Because of the new technology. Because of the new technology. You see Facebook, you see WhatsApp, a lot of things biometric, all this, they bring in a lot of information into the system. So the issue is that what do we do with this information? Because it's supposed to help our system. So and we have started work in this direction. For instance, we looked at the assessment of big data in Nigeria, identification, generation, and processing. In the opinions of the experts, this work on Bamba Yesterman and the LHA. So what do we found? There exists low awareness on the advantages of big data, even in high institutions. Some of us that are Facebook, use Instagram, all these things, biometric, we get all those things, we dump them. We do not use them to affect the students' achievement in the class, to help the students. We collect this information about them. They are there on their own. They are not used to put into the classroom. So student responses in assignments and examination mainly serve as students' achievement rather than aid in the data-based decision making. You see, end up using it to do placement without actually doing, using that data. In uh, big data also, another research by Gudlo and someone talks about big data analytics and educational research agenda. In talking about this, they propose research agenda on this. We can talk about big data analytics. What does it mean? It's a process that is used to gain meaningful insights, such as hidden patterns, 
unknown correlations, trend preferences from large, varied, and dynamic data sets for decision making. That's evaluation. So this is a bobina data. So I think I'm getting to an end. So um, it's a question, Solicitor. Conclusion. So having seen this, the glamour of the evaluators, what are we looking at? What do we take out from here? So, societal expectations are changing. We all know that. Don't we know? And goals and objectives of schools are equally changing. It is everybody's change. With mass education in vogue and job insurance supply, the present society requires that graduates be proficient in complex skills of critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration and effective communication. Teachers at all levels must develop the beautiful skill of instrumentation to enable them to carry out assessments comprehensively to include assessment of learning, assessment and assessment as learning. So you see, in education enterprise, evaluators are the center Hence, their glamour and instrumentation have been extracted and elucidated in this lecture. What did I say, Mr. Vice I want to say this without fear of contradiction. No instrumentation, no measurements. No measurement, no data. No data, no valid judgment. No decision making, no certification. We can put it in a room. Invalid instruments yields unreliable data that are not dependable. Decisions based on unreliable data will be misleading. It will be dangerous. It will have a flourishing implications in education system and even in the larger society. In education enterprise, evaluators are at the center of this. They are at the center. Hence, the glamour of instrumentation has been accepted and validated. So, what do we say? Well, I say, and maybe we say, <laughs> it's all about what identity. So, who are we? Who am I? So I can tell you categorically that I'm an evaluator. I'm a psychometrician. I'm an expert in instrumentation. We can attest it from the work we have done. You go into literature, people are adapting and adopting our instruments within and outside Nigeria. So I can now tell you that instrumentation is really the glamour of evaluators. Thank you. I think I have given just three minutes to say something. <laughs> and I told him I thought I saved some time. So acknowledgement, same with me. Glory, honor, power, majesty, belong to God. Amen. Glory, honor, power, majesty. Belong to God. I thank God for everything in my life. He is the author and finisher of my faith. He will ever be praised and glorified in my name, in Jesus' name. 
I thank all and sundry who helped me in one way or the other in my academic and professional pursuits. Grateful to my mentors and teachers, particularly late Professor Mrs. Chidolo, who prepared me in educational evaluation and supervised my PhD thesis together with Professor E.U. Akosoba. My special thanks go to my research partners, some of whom are my students. And my gratitude goes to my first cousin, late Professor Nabeni Ugonna, who was instrumental to my going to University of Lagos to do my first degree. I appreciate most sincerely the management of Nandi Azekiwe University, currently and every lead Professor Charles Okichuko Esimone, FAS. I also thank the college management of uh, Federal College of Education Technical at various periods. They engaged me very services of both the university and the college. I thank all my work colleagues in the two higher institutions for the good work relationship. I thank all the church authorities and particularly Catholic Diocese of Oka and Ecolodia. I acknowledge with appreciation my father, let me share no matter the higher sense on my dress on my son who paid my tuition on my master's degree. I thank my mother, late Norma, Norma Diego Magdalene Ezan, for her support all through, including lately in my immediate family. I thank all my siblings. Some of them are here. Ginima Ezan is here. Barista Rems is here. Oge is here. There are a number of them. So, and in all of them, I thank particularly my elder sister, let Mrs. Benedetta on one side, the son is here, Uche, representing her mother and himself, or his mother and himself, for her roles in filling the gaps in my immediate family when academic activities were yeah, making me unavailable in my home. I thank every member of his Somano family, of his Sophia, Agwata LGA, most uh, Anambra State. And there's a the family of Hitanansa in also LGA Imo State. I thank the travel of his Sophia, His Royal Highness, Colonel C. O. Morgalo, Isu too of his Sophia for his love for the family. My unequal credit to my loving and community husband, Engineer Matt Ndibem Esomono, who is always there for me and ready to assist in difficult empirical matters. And when research hurdles we are difficult to cross. Among others, I thank my children, Ebube Chuku for Sina Princess, Pas Kachuku Ebuka, Nadalu Bruno, and Goribe. I want to thank all my listeners, physical and those in visual, for participating, for keeping time for the lecture. I will ever be grateful. I pray the Almighty God to bless all in Jesus' name. I will be tempted to evaluate her, but I don't have the will with that. Please, another round of applause for our 65th inaugural lecturer, Professor Kechimere Patricia Sumono. We move straight to the next item, which is the decoration. I will now call on the chairman, Professor Uwakwe, the vice chancellor, and um, Okay, may we have the... Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Engineers, sir, please come up. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, in the presence of this audience and our international audience all over the world, 
I confirm that Professor Nkechi Esomono has presented the 65th inaugural lecture of Nandazikwe University. I kindly ask you, sir, to publicly the correct Professor Chief Nkechi Esomono as the 65th inaugural lecture of Nandazikwe University. <laughs> okay. You know, I don't want to be evaluated publicly, <laughs> but I must confess, and I'm sure all of us, that it was indeed a lecture delivered by an expert in education. You know, teachers. <laughs> Uh, yes, they're not only born, but they are trained. So this is a trained teacher. I must confess that the one hour or more that we spent here, I was uh, so uh, enthused. And practically I learned, if you evaluate me now, you will find out that uh, I was an ardent listener to that wonderful lecture. So congratulations. So it is my honor and the singular privilege to on behalf of Senate and to a congregation of our great university, uh, decorate the 65th inaugural lecturer of our great university in the person of Professor Nkechi Esomono. Congratulations. And to show her prowess as an evaluator and an instrumental, she ended a one hour dot. I was shocked. Ah, one hour. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, vote of thanks by the chairman, as he is already here. Um, Professor Richard Wakwe. <clears throat> Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, permit me to do some little bit of repetition because a uh, vote of thanks uh, are already taken in the acknowledgments, just some little bit of slant. We must thank God for making it possible for us to be here and to have maintained the regularity of this inaugural lecture. To God alone be the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. This is, uh, we must always show our appreciation for your enablement, if not for the support and empowerment of the Vice Chancellor, we would not be able I said it in the other inaugural lectures that you have already made arrangements to the end of this year. The university has made arrangements for that. Uh, we thank everybody who has come in person to show support for this program and our numerous attendees in various parts of the world who are watching us. We are very grateful indeed. We cannot mention everybody by name, but we thank all who have come from different places the person who will say the prayer, we pray for a safe return. But there is a prayer I want all of us to say for peace to reign so that this inaugural lecture will not be interrupted. We pray for industrial peace in the higher institutions. By the undeserved kindness of God, on the 2nd of December, Rita, we'll be giving the 66th. Incidentally, we started our virtual lecture, inaugural lecture, by an educationist, Professor Nkechi Ikedu. And uh, we will end it with another educationist, Ada Omei, on the 16th of this. <laughs> so it's like we started with education and we will end with education for the year. 
That is why I said that we should pray that there will be industrial peace. And you know what I mean, that there should be industrial peace so that this is not, uh, this is not interrupted. So once again, I thank everybody. I thank the Vice Chancellor for the support, the members of the inaugural lecture committee, and uh, we pray for our safety at these critical times. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Um, while things were going on, I saw the ASU chair, Comrade Ufaro. You know, I will do everything now to be greeting you everywhere so that my account will ripple with your authority. I also saw the vice chair, Comrade Abanusi. No, uh, IPC, Ogam, Arab Order. No, okay, okay, Bunam DR. I saw you also walking. I respect your presence. Okay, I've seen you there. Um, closing prayer, my call on Professor Zubike Kunobi. I think I saw him just now. Professor Kunobi stepped out. Chair, uh, what do I do? Okay, Professor Gibbon, please lead us in closing prayer. After that, we remain standing for the Unity Anthem. And once the Unity Anthem is sung, reverse. Uh, uh, procession with the VC. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being with all of us that are here. We thank you especially for the inaugural lecture. For you have led her throughout her time in life prepared her to impact on humanity. May all glory, all honor, and adoration be unto you in Jesus Christ's name. Father and our God, we thank you also for the management of this community and the inaugural lecture committee led by the son of Wakwe. We pray that you continue to guide this university as it strives to be one of the best universities in the world and in Nigeria. Guide and direct all of us, and as we go back to our various places, be with us. As has been requested, let there be peace in our country. Let there be peace in our state. Save all of us from both known and unknown men. Wherever we go, protect us in front and behind. And as we look forward to having other inaugural lecturers, be with them as they prepare. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us, of all of us in Jesus Christ's name. Let's share the grace. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the flesh of the Holy Spirit be with us all now forevermore. Amen. Um, University song. Can you be seen? of us Vice Chancellor taking the lead, followed by the inaugural lecturer, inaugural lecturers, past inaugural lecturers, and uh, other who did uh, academics.